Hello, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas where I run the jazz guitar program. I'm a Benedetto artist, Sunnyside Records artist. Way back is the latest, and uh, the word is in the works, y'all. It's coming out in January. Um, let's see, it's November, early November, November 7th, something like that. Exactly like that, November 7th. And uh, I'm still on my sabbatical, it's wonderful. Um, I highly recommend it. I turned in my new book to Mel Bay. I'm waiting on uh, their uh, thoughts <laughs> about the, uh, the book on jazz phrasing that I've been working on. And uh, yeah, just playing a lot of gigs. Weather's starting to cool down. Played solo guitar last night in Fort Worth. I encourage you all to check out my uh, YouTube channel, Davey Mooney Music. There's, uh, you know, a lot of these videos are on there, and also some solo guitar stuff, some live concerts, etc. Um, but I actually want to talk to you about something else today. The, uh, I don't know if this is an uber standard, but it's pretty close. I'll remember April. And I realize, uh, it's, you know, I've, I've been doing these videos for a couple of years now, or maybe two and a half years. Um, and every two weeks, really, I'm pretty good. I've only missed a couple weeks in there because of vacation or hockey tournaments or whatever but I've done a lot of songs and it's not that I'm running out of songs but <laughs> I'm kind of moving to standards um, that are maybe thought of as less complex than say I don't know maybe I'll remember April is less complex than Blood Count or 26-2 or some uh, Nefertiti or something like that although it's not a totally simple song and maybe this is kind of not the best way to uh, frame things or, or organize things, but I remember April is definitely one of the most recorded standards and one of those tunes where, you know, I tell my students and I tell the folks in my improv class, if you don't know this, if it gets called on a jam session or whatever, you're going to get stink eye from, uh, at least from people of, of my generation and older. And uh, I don't think it's changed that much at the highest level. Uh, maybe in the college, undergrad world, people are still pulling at their phones and looking at the changes of this song, but you know, if you want to get to that next level, you definitely got to know songs like this, and All the Things You Are, and Settled by Starlight, and Alone Together, and many, many others, but definitely those tunes. Um, so anyway, like I said, it's been recorded a million times, the song is from 1942, Gene DePaul is the, the writer. And I was looking on YouTube, I found the, you know, the original version is from this movie, Ride em Cowboy, and Abbott and Costello. And it was funny to me because I never envisioned that this song would first appear with like some cowboys going down the trail and uh, with their cows. And then it would cut to uh, this guy, I forget, I'm sorry, I forgot his name, the actor, uh, singing the song, I'll Remember April, with his, his sweetie pie next to him in the key of F. But that's where it first appeared. Um, some versions that I really love. Uh, let's see, there's Bird with Strings. Recorded in 1950. I was trying to find out, because some of this stuff, you know, finding when it was actually first released is a little bit complex. But it kind of makes a difference, because if I want to say that this version influenced the next version, um, I'd have to know that it was actually released <laughs> when the next version happened. But I think this one, I saw that it came out in 54 although it was released in, or it was recorded in 50, so Bird with Strings, that's where it's in G. And most people play this tune in G, so I'm assuming that that's where the G key came from, since the original was in F. Um, maybe 10 years after that, Sinatra does it in the key of E flat on an album called Point of No Return. Although before that, I feel like the, the version that really standardized the way we kind of play it in jazz, in like a jam session or whatever, is a uh, Clifford Brown and Max Roach, uh, Basin Street. I believe that's 56. So I was assuming that maybe that was influenced by the Bird with Strings version. Um, and I hope I'm right about that. And then uh, another one that's probably my favorite, you know, I could go on and on. This song's been recorded so many times, but I think my favorite version has got to be uh, Mingus at Antibes, <laughs> recorded in 1960. With Dolphy and uh, Bud Powell is guesting on it. Uh, Ted Curson, Booker Irvin, um, Danny Richmond, of course. And and I remember buying that CD when I was very young. I was probably 15 or 16, and I went to Blockbuster Music or whatever. I wanted to get Mayhem. I heard about Mingus, and that was the one that I picked. Um, and I remember listening to that album with 
headphones on like at night uh, before bed. And it's a deep album, y'all. I mean, that song, I'll Remember April, is like, I, I give it as an example of real sort of like ecstatic, almost like, not to get too deep, but like Dionysian, Dionysian, Dionysian. I've actually I've never heard anyone actually say that word, but just like kind of, uh, yeah, <laughs> ecstatic improvisation and performance, especially from Eric Dolphy. And there's a section at the end where he trades with Booker Irvin. Um, that's to me like one of the great sort of moments in recorded jazz. But I actually found out that that album didn't come out until like the se mid 70s. And it was crazy, you know, the release history. By the time I got it, it was like 1995. So I didn't know. I just saw it said Migas and Antibes 1960. So I assumed it came out in 1960, but it did not. But anyway, the tune, if, I, if we're going to do it in G, it's an, it's an interesting song because it's like an A-B-A -A form. So you have G major. So like G major for four bars. Then G minor for four bars. Although, um, Bird with Strings actually goes... C7, kind of C7, sharp 11, on the third bar of, of the G major section, and then back to G major again. So that's kind of interesting. I, I don't, I didn't find any other versions that did that. I'm sure there are some. And then the G minor. And on the uh, Basin Street, Clifford Brown and Max Roach, when it gets to the G minor, they do a little uh, kind of James Bond. And Mingus and Antibes, they do that as well, but it's not on Bird with Strings. So I don't know, there might be, like, I didn't listen to every single version of this song because there's a million of them, but I don't know if there was anything in between <laughs> Basin Street and the Bird with Strings that where that little moving James Bond line, you know, from the fifth, the G minor, sharp five, major six, sharp five. I think that maybe that's the Clifford Brown, Max Roach, and that Mingus and them were referencing that. But, uh, yeah, okay, so that's the sort of the A section, I guess you could say, but it's eight bar section. Four bars of G major, four bars of G minor, and then you have like A minor seven flat five, D seven, B minor seven flat five, E seven, and then a two five, back to G. And some of the early versions, like the film versions, instead of a minor seven flat five, I mean, you've heard me say on these videos, if you've watched them, that the minor seven flat five chord is kind of a recent, I don't want to say a recent invention, but uh, a way of thinking about that progression, sort of a way of organizing that harmony uh, that you don't hear as much on those early recordings. So on some of them you have like, instead of A minor seven flat five, D seven, you might hear like E flat major, D seven, F major, E seven. Or some combination. I think some of the versions you'll have A minor seven flat five D seven, then F major E seven. And on the early versions, like the film version, it's like a string arrangement anyway. So there's a lot of moving lines and moving parts. But so that's like the uh, the second uh, E bar D seven B minor seven flat five E seven. And the next eight bars, you have, uh, you know, I got to think of how many bars this song actually is. It's funny, like I, <laughs> I think it might be, uh, wow, I got to think about that. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. But the next eight bar section you have, I sort of think of this as the bridge. You've got two five in the key of B flat. B flat. G minor or G seven, or just stay on B flat. So a 2 5 to B flat twice. And then a 2 5 back to G again. And then a 2 5 to E. So it's interesting, it's almost like all the things you are a little bit, and then you have a 2 5 to G, and then a 2 5 to E, like the bridge of all the things you are. And then a 2 5 back to G. And then you have it. it so kind of A, B, A, although if I think about it, 
I think the A is like 32, 32, 32. Math time. 96 bars. That's what I'm going with, y'all. Um, although I just kind of think of it as a long A, a long B, and then another long A. So then back to the... Maybe put that chord. I kind of get a kick out of putting that chord in there. On the third bar. And then back to G major. And that's that's the whole tune. Um, a, another thing that a pretty standard intro is uh, from the Clifford Brown Max Roach at Basin Street. They do this thing. Like an A triad to G triad, and uh, with a sort of uh, it's kind of Afro Cuban, almost like fast rumba kind of drum beat that Max Roach does. Um, you know, Max Roach is one of the first drummers to kind of bring that, like when Poco Loco with Bud Powell, maybe bring some Afro Cuban elements into. I mean, one of the first, I'm not trying to say he's the first, but um, so they alternate, they kind of have that. Uh, more Afro-Cuban feel on the A's for the for the I'm sorry for the first eight bars of the A's and then when they get to the A minor seven flat five B minor seven flat five uh, part they go to swing fast swing and when they get to the solos it's it's swing the whole time but uh, I love that because you know Clifford Clifford Brown and uh, Sonny Rollins is on that and I always feel like Sonny Rollins is like in his own um, in his own world it's funny like he's not He's sort of with them at the beginning. He's kind of in his own tempo, and it's awesome. I love it. Um, and that Clifford Brown solo on this tune is so shredding. And I, I was talking to my students. Uh, I didn't actually go back and listen to it from this video, but if I remember correctly, you know, when he gets to, during his solo, when he gets to the bridge part, the 2-5 in B flat, we have two uh, C minor, F7, B flat twice. But at one point, Clifford Brown does something that... Uh, I made a video years ago called uh, Transgressive Jazz Vocabulary, <laughs> where uh, what he does, you know, the, the progression is C minor, F7, B flat, and Richie Powell was playing C minor, F7, B flat, but Clifford Brown at one point it goes, something like that, that might not be the exact line. So in other words, he's going C minor, and then playing like C sharp diminished to B flat over D, against C minor 7, F7, B flat. And what's interesting about that is you kind of get like C minor, A7, D minor. While the band is playing an F7, so on the F7 he's actually playing an E natural. And not in a chromatic kind of way, but really emphasize. That's not the exact line, but it's it's something that does that harmony in there. And I always get a kick of like kick out of being able to make an E natural work over an F7 chord because that's the no no note because you, the F7 has a E flat right. That's the flat seven. That's the note that moves the harmony, the tritone. So if you play an E natural, that's like that. It's supposed to be the worst note ever, but. That resolution to the three is so strong and it's so uh, the three chord and the one chord in the key of B flat have the same harmonic function and they're really kind of interchangeable even to the point of you can resolve to the third the, the, th the three chord the D minor chord that's something you hear a lot you hear it a lot in rhythm changes as well um, let's see what else yeah that version is just like Clip that Clifford Brown solo has got everything you need to know about, like rapid fire, bebop, eighth notes. I guess it's hard bop or whatever, but you know, just like, hmm, everything you need right there. Um, the Mingus at Antibes, that, that's another, uh, another animal altogether. I just really love, you know, I'm a big Eric Dolphy fan. And uh, one of the things he does during his solo is he finds a way to like, make a G sharp, a high G sharp work on the G major chord. And you know, Eric Dolphy, I mean, I guess it's this idea that he's, he's an avant-garde player and you know, he played with Train 
and uh, you know records like uh, Out to Lunch, which is such a classic. But I don't find his playing to be that much. Uh, I mean, to me, he's playing like Charlie Parker's language. He's just exaggerating it. And like I said before, it's Dionysian. I looked it up, the pronunciation. It's not Dionysian. Dionysus. Anyway, uh, just kind of like wild and ecstatic, but not that different in terms of the actual language. But at one point, he does, <laughs> he pulls up this G sharp up high, and it actually like blew my mind, this idea that on the G major, when you get high enough up, that actually doesn't sound that wrong to me. That note, it actually sounds kind of beautiful. And I started thinking like, I always go over this with my students, like, so if you start arpeggiating G major 7 and you go root 3rd, 5th, major 7, 9, sharp 11, 13, is the next note the root again? Or is it the sharp 15? Is it, is it G sharp when you get into that higher octave and it's... That actually doesn't sound right to me. I feel like it keeps going. actually a very beautiful note and I have a tune that I wrote called Swing Set it's kind of all about making that G sharp trying to make a G sharp sound right on a G major chord and also you know the fact that this tune does eventually go to E major so G sharp is you know the third of E major so anyway that was like a, a real a rabbit hole I'm I think I'm still stuck in that rabbit hole about that first occurred to me from Eric Dolphy playing on, uh, I'll remember April with Mingus and Antibes, but one of my favorite moments in, uh, or episodes in the whole jazz repertoire is the trading. After, you know, let's see, Bud Powell takes a really long solo. Um, he plays for like three minutes on I'll Remember April. And then I think Ted Kirsten, there's a, there's a short trumpet solo. Then Dolphy has a solo. And then at some point, does Booker Urban have a short solo in there? But Booker Urban and Eric Dolphy start trading and it's just really great. I mean, I love Booker Urban too. I mean, he's sort of a you know Texas tenor, not as well known in the in the in jazz history, but a great great player. Um, and they just start trading in it. And at one point, it breaks down and gets kind of avant garde. And it's just everybody's playing together and the drums. And then they come back in and they trade some more. And I would encourage you to just to check that out to listen to that uh, thirteen minute version of I'll Remember April. Um, it goes through so many different, it's almost like you hear the whole history of jazz up to that point, including the avant-garde um, in that recording. And, you know, you got Bud Powell, you got some contrapuntal elements, kind of like almost like New Orleans jazz at the beginning. And, you know, Mingus is yelling at everybody the whole time. And then I love that the head out, they just, uh, they don't even get to the bridge. They just play the, the A section and he's kind of like, all right, that's it. And they stop. Um, but in terms of playing on the tune, you know, it's pretty standard uh, uh, chord progression, nothing that odd about it. I do like that it sort of has a modal aspect in the first eight bars, right, that you have G major. And you could make a G Lydian, you know, the Clifford Brown and Max Roach are definitely uh, emphasizing the C sharp. You know, sometimes I'll take the Lydian to me, to the next step of sort of dissonance if I'm sick of Lydian. So maybe I'll play Ionian or just G major seven. And then maybe at some point I'll make it Lydian. And if I want to go to the next level, I'll play like kind of an F sharp triad over G. And it's almost like maybe I'm, I'm evoking like B harmonic minor. Or just those two triads together four bars of, of G minor and then, oh, I'm sorry, G major, and then the G minor, you know, it could be Dorian. I guess you could make it G melodic minor as well. And then, you know, those minor, minor two fives, you could also play them as regular two fives. In the heat of battle, I don't think it, it matters that much. But, uh, like I said, you know, the bridge, two five to B flat, two five to G, two five to E, it's all kind of, you know, major and minor two fives and uh, pretty standard language but it's a really great song y'all and there's so many great versions and so many great moments in jazz history that were uh, this song was the setting for 
So I'm going to play uh, a few choruses on it, just kind of like, I think I'm at 220 or something beats per minute, just swing it out. And uh, yeah, make sure, make sure you know this song, you guys. This is uh, on the list of tunes you must know. All right, hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 